Hi, I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I put out laid back luxury travel videos inspiring you to buy that plane ticket, get out there, and go see the world. Today is part three of my three part series about what to do when you take your first trip overseas. The first video was all about things to do in preparation. The second video are ton of ideas to do once you arrive at your first destination overseas. And this video is all about great places to go for your first trip overseas and why you should go there. So let's get started. Number one, this is a great location. Let's all go to Thailand. Thailand is inexpensive, it is exotic, people are friendly, there are so many people in tourism, they're used to tourists, it's a great place to go. You can get mountains and greenery and wilderness. You can also get gorgeous beaches as well. So I definitely recommend going to Thailand. Make sure that you go to some of the places that are off the beating path, including Chiang Rai, not just Chiang Mai, and maybe go do a liveaboard and diving off Phuket and Koh Phi Phi. Number two, let's go to Croatia. Croatia is part of Europe, except they still use their own currency. They're not on the EU system. And it's a beautiful, very country with lots of amazing places to see, including Dubrovnik, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, and also going to Split. One great thing to do is to actually take a yacht for entire week up and down the Dalmatian coast. I put a link in the description below of the company that I went with. Also, you have the interior, which is green and lush. You have the capital city of Zagreb, which is very cosmopolitan as well. It's relatively easy to get around, great roads, easy to rent a car, and super, super friendly people. So that was number two. So next on the list is in the Caribbean and it is a country of Belize. Belize is relatively easy to get to from the US and Canada. Uh, most places take the US dollar and basically everyone is speaking English while you're there. So it's super easy to get around. You fly into the city of Belize and then you can take one of those Tropic Air, one of those crazy propeller planes and go to any part of the country that you'd like. I recommend going to Ambergris Key and going scuba diving, maybe see the, black, the blue hole. And I also recommend going into the jungle where you can go spelunking, you can go bird watching, and you can listen to those crazy howler monkeys. And next on the list is probably everyone's number one spot on their bucket list. It's the country of Italy. Yes, you have to go to Italy and you have to drink the amazing wine, eat the amazing food, pasta, pizza all day long, put on 20 pounds while you're there, even if you're only there for a week. There are amazing sites like the canals of Venice and the Il Duomo in Florence and the Colosseum in Rome. But make sure while you're in Italy, you get off the beaten path. You go hiking or cycling, you go on a food tour, or you go to one of the beaches that are not on the tourist maps. Maybe head to Puglia, maybe go down to Sicily and Sardinia, or you can go hiking up in the Dolomites in the very, very north on the border of Austria. Italy has it all. So while we're in Europe, let's move on to the next one. The next one is going to the UK. Now that's London, that's Scotland, and that's Ireland, Northern Ireland and Wales as well. The UK is an incredible place to go to. Everyone is speaking English and it's relatively easy to get around. The problem is, is that they drive on the opposite side of the road. So if you're not used to driving that way, then you will definitely not want to rent a car and make sure that you don't look right, left, right. You actually look left, right, left when you're in the UK. Amazing things to see, London, you can go to Glasgow, you can hike Snowdonia in Wales, or you can head to Northern Ireland. One of the tips though is it's quite expensive to go there, so be prepared. The British pound is a very strong currency and things tend to be a little bit more expensive than you expect. And next, let's hop down to the continent of Africa. Of all the countries that I've been to in Africa, I think that South Africa is probably the easiest to get around and the most well-known and touristy, even though there are not tons of tourists everywhere. I loved South Africa. It's relatively easy to fly into Johannesburg, and then you can get down to Cape Town. Then you can head up to all of the game reserves, which is so incredible. The first time you are in one of those game trucks at sunrise and you see an elephant, 
and you see an Impala and you see a GNU and a giraffe, there is nothing like it. The country is varied. They have multiple cultures. I believe that they have 11 native languages, I think. I'm not quite sure on that. I'll have to check my facts. And number seven is one of my all-time favorite countries. They say that it is dangerous to go there. However, I go there two or three times a year and I absolutely love it. It is the country of Mexico. I find that the service is second to none. I love the food, not just a taco, but they have amazing salsas and moles and, and I love the people and I love the beaches and I love the interior whether you're going to San Miguel de Allende or you're headed into the city of Mexico City to eat some incredible food, or if you're going to either coast and you're gonna to go to the beach, whether you're headed to uh, Playa del Carmen or up to Holbox, or if you're headed to the other side to Acapulco, I love Mexico. You have to go to Mexico and it's relatively inexpensive and it's very close to the US and Canada. So put Mexico on your list. And while we're speaking Spanish, let's move on to number eight. This time, let's head to South America. I feel that Ecuador is a great place to start when you are traveling for the first time overseas. Whether you're looking for the mountains of Cuenca, where there are tons of expats, you're looking for a cosmopolitan city, the capital city of Quito, or you're looking for the beach in Guayaquil, or the coup de gras in Ecuador is going to the Galapagos. You can go to the Galapagos and stay on a liveaboard for a week and go see all the incredible animals that are on the Galapagos Islands. Ecuador is a fantastic place. It's relatively easy to get around. Everybody speaks Spanish because that is a native language, but a lot of people speak English as well. It is, you can also sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes pay with the US dollar. And because there are lots of expats from North America, it's a relatively easy place with a good amount of tourists and a good understanding of the North American culture. So Ecuador is next on the list. So let's move on to number nine. So I could have picked Australia for number nine, but I decided to be a little bit different and pick New Zealand. New Zealand is a much smaller country and much easier to see the whole country in a short amount of time. When I say short, I would at least go for two, two and a half weeks if you can. It is a relatively easy place to get around. It's a good place to rent a car or a camper van and camp your way around both islands. It has the cosmopolitan Auckland in the north and the beaches and then in the south you have the beautiful town of Queenstown and you have wine country. They make Pinot Noir and they're famous for their New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc as well. So it's a great place to go. You can go spelunking, you can go surfing, you can go snow skiing. Actually, when I was in Queenstown, I did bungee jumping and skydiving in the same day because Queenstown is known for its adventure sports. So that was number nine. Definitely add New Zealand to your list. And number 10, I have to go home for this one. There are so many things to do, so many interesting people to meet, and such varied topography here in the United States. Whether you want to go to New York, or LA and San Francisco, or to Vegas, those big cities are amazing, but I definitely recommend that you go out of these major cities and go see some of the smaller towns, go hiking in all of the national parks, go to Yellowstone, go to the Grand Tetons, do some crazy things like go alligator hunting. Okay, maybe not hunting, but alligator watching outside of New Orleans or go see the Everglades in Florida. So a couple of downsides of the US, one is a gigantic country. And so be prepared that the distances are much further than they look on the map. Also, we don't have great public transportation. So I recommend instead of taking a Greyhound, I do suggest that you fly between locations or you hire a car and make it a road trip. Also, in the big cities, it is quite expensive. So be prepared to shell out those dollars when you are in the large cities. But in the small towns, you'll meet some great people. You'll get some inexpensive food and inexpensive eclectic accommodation. I hope that you enjoyed my 10 stops for your first trip overseas. And if you have a recommendation, definitely leave it in the comments below. I am Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and I will see you on the next adventure. Enjoy your first trip overseas. No, I don't know what to say.
I don't know. Inexplained. Living in North. What is it? Um, I don't know if that's even true. To the Drakenberg. Drakenberg. And it's relatively. I don't know what it is relatively.